All right, next up, we're going to talk about the best supporting actor category, and uh, as uh, you called it last year, and so accurately, the villainous category, if you will, the the, the villain, uh, the villain. Villainous. <laughs> this I don't mean. I don't mean. These are men. Villainous. <laughs> like villainous. Outs. Like I need to pronounce outs. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I should have specified a bit better. But uh, I remember. Yes. It's been a year. Crystal Waltz. So good. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's right. Actually, the last the last three winners of the award: Javier yeah. Bardem, yeah. Uh, uh, Heath Ledger, yeah, and Crystal Waltz. All, um, all money for being villains. I don't think there's any major villains. villains they really in this category. There really isn't. Uh, the front runners for this category, uh, neck and neck race, are Jeffrey Rush and Christian Bale. Jeffrey uh, Rush for what? The King's Speech. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> he was fantastic in that film. No doubt he'll get a nomination. I think him and Bale are the two favorites. Uh, Bale's. I, yeah. yeah. Well, well, we'll see. A lot of praise for his scene stealing um, uh, work in The Fighter, which. Uh, I think he was maybe one of the best performances of his career. I, I know, agree. I know Bale's taking a lot of flack for that voice of his, but he really uh, takes on a different kind of role here that he's not he's used He's Welsh. To. That's right, he Christian is. Christian Bale's Welsh. Did if, you know that? If, if you saw his acceptance speech of the Golden Globes, some people were actually taken aback by that. They're like, what? Where's he from? I have to remember because he's so good as an American. <laughs> like, I, don't, I think very rarely he's ever used his own accent in any movie. I think he's mostly played him. I've only ever seen him as an American. Me too, actually. Yeah. Even in his early career when you look at Empire of the oh, Sun. Oh, no. I, uh, when he was in Little Woman, he played a Brit. That's right. He did. Yes, I forgot that he was in that. But it was set in America. But even when you see him... <laughs> <laughs> even when you see him in a movie like Empire of the Sun, when he's only like 12, 13 years old or whatever, he... Uh, he had like, um, he had the American accent, so he was he's been learning from a young age to have it. I'm surprised he still kept the the Welsh accent. Yeah, exactly. they live in America for so long, you tend to lose it. Yeah, uh, at least Welsh is cool, and he's <laughs> Christian Bale. That so. is true. That is true. <laughs> Finally, somebody else Welsh other than Tom Jones. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. But anyway, talk about best supporting actor. The ones I thought were overlooked, uh, even at, at the Golden Globes, although he's gotten recognition from the role from critics, is a guy named John Hawks. In a movie called Winter's Bone, and I guess you've heard of it. You've heard of it. Um, he comes into the movie. Just uh, you, you think when you're watching it, just as a secondary, you know, background character of the story. Like he, like you think he's not necessarily bad, but he won't necessarily stand out. He shocked me in this film. He's mostly a character actor who's had a lot of very small roles and nothing. We say overly significant. As a matter of fact, the thing that I recognize him from first and foremost, and this is kind of embarrassing to him, was the movie called Hardball with Keanu Reeves, where he played his best friend. And uh, <laughs> and the poor guy, like, that's what he probably gets recognized the most for. And he's he's actually a really good actor. He's done a lot of TV work. Uh, here in this movie, he plays, uh, of course, Winter's Bone is the story of a young teenage girl, uh, about 16, 17 years old, trying to hold her family together. Uh, and and she has real problems. And I said this in my 10 best show. Not, you know, oh my gosh, Justin Bieber concert sold out type problems. This girl has real, real problems in her life. And she's trying to rise above what she has to make her life work and make her family's life work. And trying to find her estranged dad who uh, has been, I guess, missing or missing in action for quite some time. And her uncle, played by John Hawks, um, you can see he's just kind of your typical, you know, dirtbag kind of kind of guy at first. And when you, you get to know the character, you see he really gets into the, the task at hand. I mean, it's like it's kind of like he was looking for something in, to make his life mean something. And this whole scenario, I guess you say, just made him feel that way. And you really grow to uh, you really grow to get into this character through the story, and hopefully you experience that when you see it. I do want to see it, yeah. Uh, it's I had a few like lead actor nominations at the Golden Globes as well. Jennifer Lawrence is a fantastic yeah, actress, yeah. yeah. Um, another one um, I feel that's being overlooked uh, is a movie called Get Low that came out earlier this, uh, this summer and actually had a big um, big impact at the Toronto Film Festival. It was starring Robert Duvall, uh, who's been uh, strongly considered in some circles, but the one I feel is being more overlooked than him is Bill Murray, his supporting role. Um, it's been a while since Bill Murray's really... Uh, really done that whole scene, you know, because he's known for the scene stealing, you know, you want more of his character kind of thing, which he's great at doing in, in supporting roles in movies. In this one, he finally returns that after doing a couple of uh, yawners. But, uh, and that's the thing I like about him, is that his whole, I guess say the, the term deadpan is often used to describe him through his entire career, is that, you know, he knows he's cracking a joke, but doesn't look like he's cracking a joke. But yeah, we're laughing hysterically, he's just keeping a straight face, and that's what we love about it. And... I, he does that. This it's, it's more dramatic role. It's not, he's not like kind of you know side splitting humor, but just the substance he lends to Robert Duvall's character as the uh, funeral director. Duvall's character wants to have his funeral before he dies, kind of thing. This takes place years and years ago, 
And uh, with a great cast of Duvall and also Sissy Spacek as well, um, they really helped this film flow along. But Bill Murray kind of gives, you see the intrigue of his character from the get-go, and he, he's just that kind of guy who just, you, you just want, I know I said this a lot, he want, keeps you wanting more. And it's not, it's not the Ellen Page type of role where he's just telling the story, but he is helping it roll along. Mm -hmm. And that's important, I think, for a supporting role. He's not only giving himself some good screen time, he's also lending something to Duvall's character as well. And that's, I think, I think it's a term of supporting it's lost, uh, yeah. no pun intended, lost in the translation yeah. uh, of what happens. Yeah. What, what would you say? Um, well, I haven't seen either of those films, but... Mm -hmm. Um, for the category itself, actually, and I'll mention this when we talk about actor as well, I think that Christian Bale should be considered for best actor, not best supporting actor. I think oh, that yeah. his role was bigger than just a supporting role. Um, I think he shared lead time with Mark Wahlberg, and the story was just, just as much about Christian Bale that it was about Mark Wahlberg. That being said, my favorites for this category are Jeffrey Rush and Andrew Garfield from The Social Network, Absolutely. who was a definite favorite when I saw the movie, and I think I mentioned that too. Like, whenever I see a good film, and I come home, and as soon as I get home, I'm like, Bill, what do you think of this? You know. <laughs> and um, when I saw The Social Network, I immediately said screenplay, director, picture, supporting actor, and those were my four um, predictions for winners, not just nominations, but for winners. I thought Andrew Garfield completely engulfed this movie. He really did. <laughs> and um, he's also British. Yes, he is. And yeah. I didn't know that because he plays American so well. Mm -hmm. And he, he brought, he was just so, he was emotional, but he reined it in. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a kind of reining in that Jesse Eisenberg did as Mark Zuckerberg, but it was a an emotional, but not like blatantly emotional. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> How do you how do you compare that? But he yeah. he wasn't cynical, emotional. He was yes. He was the heart of the film. He was the heart of the film, but it wasn't I like was the soul. He was the heart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but not like cheesy, dramatic. Oh, boohoo heart. <laughs> it was like it was a good heart of the film. Yeah, it's, 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 and. Uh, you know, if you remember from last year, I'm all about the heart of the film. You are, yes. That's why I loved, you know, Jeremy Renner in The Hurt Locker, because yes. he was the heart of the film. But again, it wasn't like that blatant heart. It was a, you know, yeah. a good a good heart. I don't know. I, I think the heart and the soul of the film should always be acknowledged yeah. uh, both, in both ways. And that's why when you talk about The Hurt Locker, I talk about how Anthony Mackie was yeah. on the last year Absolutely. dramatically. And I think yeah. that was just a crime in itself. And, uh, <laughs> But yeah, the heart and soul in the film is very important. Uh, Andrew Garfield, I love that scene. One of the scenes I love is when uh, Justin Timberlake enters the film with Sean Parker. Yeah. And that scene where they're sitting at the table together with the girls and that, and they're interacting. And that was just fantastic. Yeah. This is fantastic. His, his, his voiceover, like when he's talking about, you know, reflecting back on those moments and then when he's actually acting, it's just so precise. It is. And they're doing, they're doing two, those were filmed two different times. And yet he was able to capture in that scene, the emotion that he's also voiceovering, <laughs> that he's also explaining, and he has the perfect uh, and it was, it was yeah, it was right on, right on, Absolutely. and he he will get a nomination. There's no question about that. But I, I honestly think that he could win this category if Christian Bale was moved up yeah, there to you go. actor. But then I also love Jeffrey Rush. So. <laughs> it's it's a tight, it's a tighter category. And he this was year. very very good. That's true. It's a tighter category this year than has ever been. Uh, which is which is really good. Years. It's awesome to see supporting roles, even if Christian Bale is nominated for supporting actor. I mean, the other, I can't remember what the other two nominees are, but um, or were in for the mm -hmm. Golden Globes. But it's really great to see supporting actors, you know, have such strong characters and bring so much to the role. Absolutely. And they really do drive the film. They do. They really yeah. do. Uh, it's going to be a tight category this year, and I look forward to it.